Hey guys, Steven here from the Trading Channel. Thank you for joining me for today's review video. And if you're new, what I do during these videos is go through the market throughout the past month or so and show you the trades that I've taken based around these strategies that I teach for free here on my YouTube channel. And I show you exactly how those strategies have performed throughout that amount of time. I also try to throw in a little bit of education along with these videos. So today we'll be talking a little bit about the importance of compound interest and how position sizing can really increase your profit potential throughout a long period of time. And I'll explain a little more about that throughout the rest of this video, but for now, I'll let the intro and disclaimer roll, and I'll be right back to show you how my trading went in the month of June. See you soon. Welcome back guys. So how important is money management or compound interest? Here are some real statistics of a strategy that I've created recently and I tested the strategy over the past three years of data from 2013 to now and this is what the strategy produced. Uh, starting with a $10,000 account using $100 risk per trade for the full three years the strategy produced $20,000 or 200% gain on that account using that strategy. Now using compound interest which is simply adjusting your position size based on your account value so say you have a ten thousand dollar account and it goes to eleven thousand instead of risking one hundred dollars per trade which would be one percent of a ten thousand dollar account you now risk one hundred and ten dollars per trade which is one percent of your eleven thousand dollar account. So just by doing that using the same exact strategy placing the same exact trades over the course of that same three year period you could have taken a ten thousand dollar account and just by using compound interest you could have turned that ten thousand dollar account into a seventy thousand dollar account or a seven hundred percent gain in three years. Albert Einstein once said that compound interest was the eighth wonder of the world and after seeing the impact and the profit potential that using compound interest can give it is hard to argue that. So we'll get a little deeper into this subject later on in the video but for now Let's jump over to the charts and go ahead and begin the review process. Alright guys, so this video is one of the longest ones I have ever done. It's rocking on about 30 minutes long. So what I wanted to do is just tell you guys that if you're interested in seeing the review process where I go through and show you how the strategies that I teach for, here, for free here on my YouTube channel performed throughout the past few weeks, then just keep the video playing. But if you clicked on this video because you're interested in seeing how compound interest affects an equity curve and how to calculate compound interest in a spreadsheet in order to use it with your backtesting results then what you can do is just fast forward this video to 16 minutes and 55 seconds and what that will do is just take you directly to where I start talking about money management and compound interest. Don't get me wrong there's some very educational content throughout the entire review but I did want to warn you guys that this video is very long and that the compound interest part of this video does start at around 16 minutes and 55 seconds. So with that said, I'll go ahead and start the review process. So we're going to start this review video off here on the Aussie Canada. This was the least active pair that I traded throughout the month of June. I only had two trades and they're both on the screen in front of you. So it was just two advanced pattern trades on this pair throughout the entire month of June. And the reason I wanted to start here is because these two trades were discussed in my previous video successful swing trades so I'm going to play a clip from that video now and then come back and discuss the analysis that I went through in order to get involved in these trades so sit tight and I'll be right back so this is called bracketing the market it's just when you have the opportunity to get a long trade or a short trade no matter what the market decides to do so either way if the market decides to come up we sell on this Gartley pattern right here and if the market decides to go down we can buy right here on the butterfly and either way we have a trading opportunity. Welcome back guys. So that clip I just showed you guys was talking specifically about this butterfly pattern here and the possibility for a Gartley pattern set up as well. If I just go ahead and delete this bat pattern here and stick in a couple of horizontal lines to show you guys how we were in a form of consolidation here. So while we're in this consolidation I'm constantly looking for advanced patterns obviously we saw the bat pattern come in and it was a successful pattern 
and the next thing I was looking for as you saw in the clip was for the market to either put in a Gartley pattern right here which did not complete or for the market to come down and hit the D point of our butterfly pattern here as I discussed in that clip I was waiting on the market to either come up hitting the Gartley and come down or go down hitting the butterfly entry and go up which is exactly what we did and that's how we were able to capitalize on this move in the market I did have one other advanced pattern trade here on the Aussie Canada recently it was yesterday and this was a cipher pattern that we managed to get about 33 pips out of so we'll go ahead and move on to the next pair and that's gonna be the Euro Aussie we are currently in a day trade on the Euro Aussie not up big only a few pips in profit up about eighteen dollars right now but as for the month of June on the Euro Aussie we had a impulsive move here followed by a simple pattern in the form of a wedge we broke out of that simple pattern our stops are always placed above the highest point of resistance of that simple pattern which would be right here so we have stops above that and our target is set to a one to one and after our one to one is hit we move our stop loss to break even and trail stops from there as you can see though we hit our target right down here and came up to be stopped out for break even very soon afterwards so that was a one target winner of 67 pips next up we had a losing 786 trade for those of you that have seen the tutorial we obviously break below structure here and assuming that the trend will continue in that direction after the break and close below structure we draw a 786 retracement from our previous swing high to our new swing low and that was an unsuccessful trade if you're interested in learning a little bit about the 786 strategy that I use in my trading then I will put a link in the bottom left hand side of your screen where you can check out that video and I'll also put a link somewhere on the screen for the simple pattern video which will show you exactly how I take advantage of these kind of trades right here impulsive move down followed by a wedge a breakout of that wedge as we've already discussed stops go above our previous swing high here targets at a one to one and then unfortunately after hitting targets we did come up and get stopped out for break even so that was a winner of 45 pips on the pennant pattern there next we had a successful 786 pattern if I zoom in the chart it may make it easier to see I'm sorry all this is so clustered up but it just makes it a lot faster if I go ahead and draw in all of my trades throughout the month for you guys here was a 786 pattern as you can see we broke below this structure level here closed below it expecting the trend to continue to the downside we drew our Fibonacci retracement from swing high here to our swing low and sold the 786 retracement for a nice win same thing a little lower here break and close below our previous structure level from the swing high here to our newly created swing low here 786 retracement here targets at previous body of the candles stops above here obviously we came down to hit targets before we were stopped out next we had another 786 strategy for a win so that's going to be three wins in a row on the 786 strategy we came down and closed below this structure level making this our new swing high this our new swing low pulled a 786 retracement from that area to catch this move down and what I did on this one was actually take a 786 retracement from here and place my stops just above that swing high right here and my targets were actually at previous resistance that could turn into support here because of us breaking this level is the reason I decided to put targets there so that managed to get us a gain of 86 pips on that 786 pattern next another winning 786 pattern which makes four in a row here on the Euro Aussie treated us pretty well for the month of June as you can see breaking through again here swing high to swing low and I know this is getting repetitive but the more you repeat something the easier it will be to remember so that's the reason I'm doing it like this obviously we got our 786 retracement came down to the bodies of the previous swing low here to hit our targets for a win of 63 pips 
the next 786 trade after breaking below our previous structure level came up and wicked us out for a loss of 57 unfortunately and no other trade since then other than the day trade that we're in now down on the 15 minute chart we'll move on to the pound dollar now here on the pound dollar we're also involved in a day trade that I may discuss a little further. This is the one that I was in at the beginning of the video, so it's going my way pretty well now. And if I have time at the end of the video, I'll go ahead and talk you through some of that analysis. If I zoom out the chart here, we'll go ahead and take a look at the trades we had throughout June on the pound dollar. The first one was a unsuccessful bat pattern. Came up to our 50% retracement here, back down to a 382 and up to 886 completion. If you're not sure about the ratios of the bat pattern or how to draw it on the chart, then make sure to check out my bat pattern tutorial video, which I'll put a link for at the bottom left-hand side of your screen. Next was an unsuccessful Gartley pattern, pulling from this swing low up, our 618 retracement, another 618, and down to a 127 extension, which was unsuccessful for minus 58 pips. Next up, we had a nice flag pattern here. Impulsive move down creation of a flag we broke through that as I said earlier the stops always go above the highest point of the swing high of the flag targets go at a one-to-one -one risk reward for me and then I move my stop to break even which was hit here taking me out for break even on the second part of my position and banking in around 84 pips next up we had a cipher pattern which was absolutely unsuccessful losing 87 pips here and then another cipher which I treated as a 786 trade and this is something you can do when you get a advanced pattern in the same direction of the trend as you can see here we have this advanced cipher pattern after the creation of a strong uptrend so since we know that then we can take targets for this advanced pattern up here at previous structure instead of at a 382 retracement or at least that's how I like to trade these advanced patterns in trend continuation. So trading it that way gave me a profit of 130 pips on that trade. Next we had a 786 retracement trade here for a profit of 124 pips. And if you're wondering why this was not a 786 trade from here up, yes I know that we broke structure here, but this was the day of the Brexit decision so I decided not to trade at all that day. And then we come down here and we see that we had a 786 retracement and really expecting this market to continue in the downward direction. I went ahead and took that trade. Unfortunately, it was a loss of 80 pips. Next, the final pair we're going to look at today for the review process is the Euro dollar. Zoom out the chart here. And on the Euro dollar, this first trade that you see here, the flag pattern, is the one that I discussed in my previous video and this is a trade that I sent out to the people that are subscribed to my email list it was a winner of around 55 pips next we had a unsuccessful 786 trade which was minus 36 pips and after that we had a wedge breakout pattern after an impulsive move down which is the important part on these breakout patterns guys you want to make sure that you have a very impulsive move down not just any move down but one that looks to break previous structure many different previous structure levels so we had a break of one two three four swing lows with this one move then we created a wedge and obviously we sold the breakout and as we've stated before stops above our swing high here targets at a one to one once targets once first targets are hit stops move up to break even Next up, a winning 786 trade from this swing high that we've circled here down to our new swing low after the break and close below our previous swing low. And obviously a winner there. Next, a losing 786 trade after the break below our previous swing low here. We started to look for the 786 retracement, got it, and no follow through, losing that, losing 53 pips on that trade. Then we had a successful bat pattern here for around 48 pips of profit and no trades since then on the euro dollar. So there's a look at all the trades that I've taken throughout the past month using the strategies that I teach here on my YouTube channel. Next we'll take a look at the equity curve and then we'll discuss a little more about that compound interest that we were talking about earlier in the video. 
Alright guys, so here we are on the equity curve and the trades that we're going to take a look at are right here at the beginning of June as you see here in the date column 6116 down to 63016 which was my entire month of June trading as you can see we took the account from 2384 pips to 3057 pips throughout that amount of time and you can see here on the spreadsheet that trade number 171 was the beginning of June so what I'll do is here on my equity curve I'll find 171 draw a line straight up from there to show you guys what the equity curve looks like since the month of June so as you can see at the start of the month of June we came up close to 2500 pips and it's consolidated a bit here for about 10 trades before breaking through and heading up towards 3000 pips making our way all the way up to about 2700 before coming back down in a slight drawdown of about four or five percent that little push downwards is this area right here where I had four losing trades in a row these four trades so that caused this little push down back to about 2600 back to about 2600 pips and then another large move up that pushed us above 3000 pips and got us where we sit today at 3057 pips this has been seven months that has taken us to make these kind of gains and there's programs and websites out there that are that are promising people a thousand pips a week and a thousand pips a month and that's just not logical it's it's not something that you should really expect from your trading something that you could expect if you stay consistent with a strategy that wins over 50 percent of the time and has better than a one-to-one -one risk reward and it doesn't necessarily have to do that you can have a strategy that has less than a one-to-one -one risk reward but wins 80 percent of the time or more than a two to one and only wins 30 or 40 percent of the time any of those would be fine depending on your personality the reason I like trading like this is because I found that the more times I win the more trades I win the easier it is for me to deal with trading psychologically if I can have a pretty high winning percentage something over 50 percent so that's why I trade this way it all depends on your personality though but this part of the video is getting a little bit long so I don't know if I'm gonna have a lot of time to go over money management with you guys today my next video will be about money management and in that video I'll go into much further detail than I'll be able to here but I will go over to the spreadsheet that has the results of the strategy that I was talking about in the beginning of the video that I've tested recently that I tested over the past three years and plug these results from my back testing into a spreadsheet just to show you guys the difference between what an account can grow towards without using compound interest and what an account can grow to with using compound interest and the difference between the two when it comes to drawdown and profit potential. So I'll head over there now. Alright guys, so here are the results of that back testing that I was talking about. What I did was tested this strategy on two different time frames, the one hour and four hour, and on five different pairs in order to produce these results that you see on your screen. The results were from the time of the first month of 2013, which was January of 2013, all the way to present date if you look down here almost 600 trades recorded uh, all the way to June the 20th which was the last time that I took a trade using the strategy and if we head back up here what I really want you guys to take a look at is the number section over here which is going to show you the difference between what could have happened throughout that entire time the entire three years or three and a half years if you would have just used one percent risk per trade which means you would have just risked $100 per trade if you started with a $10,000 account for the entirety of the three years no matter what your account grew to even though your account may be at $20,000 you're still only risking $100 per trade this is what that would have produced it would have produced your cash gain of $26,000 from a $10,000 account in three years which isn't bad that's not terrible return on your money it's not great but it's much better than the return you would get if your money was just sitting in a bank. This strategy produced 338 winners, 222 losers, giving me a winning percentage of 60% and an average risk reward of 1.45. So the pretty good makings of a reliable strategy. The maximum drawdown for this strategy using a 1% risk was 6.5%. Now let's take a look at the numbers when risking 1% using compound interest. So adjusting our position size. Every time the account goes up, we adjust it to one we adjust our risk to 1% of the current account value. 
So trading that way, obviously the same exact trades, 338 wins, 222 losses, your 60% winning ratio, and 1.45 risk reward. The difference is the amount of cash made. If you look here, instead of over the past three and a half years only making 260% of the total account, we managed to make 1,130% on the account which turns a $10,000 account into a $130,000 account in about three and a half years. That is the importance of compound interest. That's what compound interest can do for your strategies. Because this strategy is not a 90% winner with a two to one risk reward. This is not the holy grail of strategies. We're talking about something that barely wins over 50% of the time and gives you a little better than a one to one risk reward. So consistently traded, obviously you're gonna make money, but as you can see, if you were not using compound interest, the money you would make would really not be substantial. Yet whenever you decide to use some compound interest, and this has to come after you create a profitable strategy, after you create a profitable trading plan. This means nothing to you if you don't know how to trade profitably yet. But this is something you can look forward to knowing that even if you have a very small account, if you decide to include this principle of compound interest to that account, then you can make money a lot faster than you would think. You can make serious money a lot faster than you think. As you can see here, using this strategy alone, I could have taken a $10,000 account and turned it into $130,000 using compound interest over the course of three and a half years. That's a great return on your money. So that's the importance of compound interest, guys. Uh, obviously over here, I do this just for personal reasons. All managed accounts that I take on are going to have either 1% risk or less depending on the client's personality and risk appetite. But for personal use, sometimes I do use a 2% risk, which I do not suggest anyone do. Obviously, I don't suggest anything because I am not a licensed financial advisor or planner, but using a 2% risk is a good way to go broke if you're new. I know that for a fact. Using a 2% risk means that you can only lose 10 trades in a row and your account's down 20%. That's not something you want to see when you're first starting out. That's not something you want to see even if you're a veteran in trading. But it does substantially increase your ability to gain money over time. Now risking 2% of your account, and I know this is going to be very hard for some of you to believe. It was hard for me to believe before I put it into action myself and actually plug the numbers into my spreadsheet. But using a 2% risk, obviously you make more money than you would if you used a 1% risk, right? You go from a $26,000 return over the same period of time using the same trades to a $53,000 return, doubling what you would have made with a 1% risk. That's obvious, but take a look at what happens when you use a 2% risk with compound interest. Instead of making your $53,000, which is 500% in three years, great return on a $10,000 account, it is actually possible to take a $10,000 account, and as I said, brace yourself, I know this is hard to believe, and turn it into a $1.7 million account in three years. If you can find a strategy that will produce 60% winning ratio and a close to a 1.5 risk reward, and you use a 2% risk with compound interest, this is only for veterans. Do not do this if you are starting out. There's no reason to risk 2% of your account. When I started out, I only risked a half a percent of my account per trade, even though I had already back tested and had a clearly defined trading plan and my back testing results said that I would make money, I started out only risking a half a percent per trade. Risking 2% per trade comes with the downside as well. You go from a 6% drawdown to a 14% drawdown and that's much harder to swallow. You lose, you can lose your entire account much faster with a 2% risk. So risking 2% is not all good. But this is just giving you something to look forward to once you become a profitable trader. Once you've proven to yourself that you are profitable over the course of a very long period of time, for me that took me a year of being profitable month after month to prove to myself that I could risk a larger amount of my capital than a half a percent. So for you it may be different and that's completely up to you, but this is something you can look forward to. So that's just something to ponder about. Nothing set in stone. I'm not saying that you're going to be a millionaire in three years if you become a successful trader and I know that that's something that's very hard to believe, but my suggestion would be plug it into a spreadsheet yourself. Test your own strategies. And let me show you how to do that before we leave. Uh, I'm going to take you through the format that you have to use in order to calculate 1% risk per trade. Uh, the first thing you'll need is your risk reward on each trade. So anytime you're back testing, make sure you write down your risk reward on each trade. 
because that's going to play a big part in determining how you're going to be risking 1% per trade. What you're going to do next is for the very first trade you see here on the euro dollar was our very first trade. We had a 1.03 risk. So with my compounded risk, all you do is take ten, the starting capital, which is $10,000 in this case here. For those of you who aren't familiar with writing code in Excel, you have to start the function with an equal sign. So you start with an equal sign, you put in parentheses, your account value, which is 10,000 at this point because we're just starting out with a $10,000 account. You multiply that account value by 1% or 0 0.01, close the parentheses, and multiply that times your risk to reward. So what you're doing is your total account value multiplied by 1% is giving you 1% of your account value, which in this case is $100 because our account value is 10,000. And then you're multiplying that $100, F4 is going to be F, here is F, 4 is here, so that's our very first trade is F4 right here. So what we're doing is multiplying $100 times 1.03 and then we're adding that to our account value which is $10,000 right now. That gives us $10,103. Now it gets a little more simple after that. You don't have to go down through the columns and write that out every single time. If you did it would be tedious. It's much easier than that. All you have to do is start your function with your equal sign, open parentheses, click your previous account balance, multiply that times 1% or 0 0.01, close your parentheses, so now you have told the formula that you need 1% of your account balance. That's what this code here means. So now that you have 1% of your account balance, you're multiplying that times your risk reward, which is why it's so important to write down risk reward for each trade. And then after you have that sum, that total of your of 1% of your account balance times your risk reward, then you add your previous balance. And all you do there is put an addition symbol and you click your previous balance and enter. And you'll see if we do that the whole way down, every single column is the same and you don't have to go down through here as I said before and actually write that in every column if you just take click your function click your tab here and grab the little box it'll come up as a crosshair grab it and pull it down the entire way and what that's gonna do is put that formula in every box all the way down that same formula of multiplying 1% of your account value to your risk reward and for your risk reward, since you're risking 1% for all your losing trades, you need to have minus 1 on your risk reward since you're risking 1%. And if you're risking 2%, all of your losing trades need to be minus 2. So every losing trade is minus 1. What that's going to do is give you a negative 1% of your account value to add to the previous balance, which will in turn be risking 1% of the account. That's something that you have to remember as well so whenever you're going down through there writing out your risk reward on each trade your losses need to be negative 1 on every trade. Alright so I want to mention a couple of more things before I end this very very long video and if you've stuck around throughout the entire video then thank you very much. My hat's off to you for the dedication you've shown by watching this entire video. It's almost 30 minutes long now. I did not expect it to take quite this long, but obviously if you watch the whole thing, this is something you're very interested in and very passionate about. So if that's the case, I would like for you to take this opportunity to head over to my website, thetradingchannel.net. There's a link in the description below this video where you can sign up on my email list. And what I'm going to be doing is sending everyone that subscribed to my website a tutorial showing exactly how I set up my spreadsheet, not just the compound interest part here but if you're a little bit confused about how I set up the other parts of this spreadsheet then make sure to go over there and subscribe to my email list because that tutorial is going to be explaining from start to finish 
from a clean slate exactly how I plug in every bit of these formulas and everything it takes to come up with the number section over here and as I said really just showing you how I set up my spreadsheet from nothing to this so if that's something you're interested in then make sure to head over there and sign up for my email list you'll also be receiving a free butterfly pattern tutorial and free analysis on one pair per week and also an update for those of you who are already subscribed to my email list or interested in advanced patterns. The course that I have created for advanced patterns will be coming out within the next 30 days or so. And there will also be an advanced pattern mentor program, which will be a very inexpensive program where I will just be waking up very early every morning and sending you guys screenshots or a video and showing you guys the advanced patterns that I've spotted and how I plan to trade them throughout the day. Also, you'll be receiving my personal email where you can email me any questions you might have about advanced patterns or anything else about forex trading and I'll be responding to those emails within at least one business day and I may do a webinar once or twice a month as well for the people that are subscribed to that mentor program and it's really just a good way for you guys to see how I spot the patterns and to help you if you're new to see if you're doing it correctly and if you're a veteran that just doesn't have the time to spot the patterns yourself then I think it would really be beneficial to have someone looking at the market for you and spotting these patterns. And also one more thing before I go, the strategy that you see here is going to be the first trend continuation strategy course that I have on my website. So if you're interested in learning how to trade the strategy that produced these results, then make sure you head over to my website and subscribe by entering your email in the contact info. But enough about that. If you're interested in any of that, then make sure to head to my website. If not, and make sure to stay tuned and keep an eye out for my next video here on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed so you're alerted when that video does come out. Best of luck in the markets next week, and I'll talk to you guys soon.